My name is Robert Hinchliffe. I'm Professor of Vascular Surgery at the University of Bristol and North Bristol NHS Trust. And I co-led the Peripheral Artery Disease Guidelines for the International Working Group on the Diabetic Foot. PAD or peripheral artery disease is a common condition. Um, it's an arterial disease associated with atherosclerosis and a reduction of blood flow to the lower limbs. It's present in about 20% of people aged 60 or over uh, and is increasing in prevalence with an aging population. A peripheral artery disease in most patients is completely asymptomatic and patients don't know they've got the disease. In some patients, um, they get pain when they exercise in their lower limbs and that is typically relieved by rest and that's called claudication. And in a small proportion of patients, the reduction in blood flow to the lower limb and the feet is so severe that they develop pain at rest. And in some they have ulcers or wounds on the foot which fail to heal. And these um, problems are uh, associated with very high risk of amputation and premature death. A peripheral artery disease is becoming more common and that's in part due to an aging population. But as a vascular surgeon in the 1980s and 1990s, uh, the vast majority of peripheral artery disease you would have seen would have been associated with smoking. And whilst we're still seeing problems related to smoking, the increasing issue is related uh, to diabetes and chronic kidney disease. There are a number of important differences. Um, the location of the arterial disease in patients with diabetes is typically uh, below the level of the knee or in the crural vessels, whereas in people who smoke, it's, it's often um, uh, present in the superficial femoral artery in the thigh. The other issues um, which make arterial disease more difficult to diagnose and treat are that the vessels are often calcified, which means that they're difficult to compress and therefore the ankle brachial pressure index may be slightly misleading. Uh, and the calcification can... Uh, result in uh, technically more difficult operations for bypass procedures or angioplasties or stents. Uh, and the other issue of very important significance is the fact that the occlusions or the arterial blockages are often longer in diabetes with a less well-developed collateral circulation. So the perfusion deficit in the foot is often a lot more severe for the same uh, distance or the same length of occlusion. And then on top of that, uh, unfortunately, patients with diabetes often have microvascular circulatory problems with arterial vena shunting, which shunts blood away from the important uh, areas of the skin and adnexal tissues. Uh, and therefore, patients are more likely to find they have difficulties in healing ulcers. A peripheral arterial disease diagnosis uh, can be made on clinical history, uh, clinical examination findings and a non-invasive vascular laboratory test. Both the history and clinical examination findings can be unreliable and especially in patients with diabetes who often don't present with claudication um, and who have the most distal arterial disease, the examination findings uh, and history can be unreliable. And that's why I think in any patient in whom you make a diagnosis of peripheral arterial disease, that really has to be backed up by non-invasive vascular lab tests. There are a number of bedside tests um, that are available. Uh, these include continuous wave Doppler, ABI or ABPI, which is ankle brachial index or ankle brachial pressure index, toe pressure, uh, and then some microcirculatory tests such as uh, transcutaneous oxygen uh, measurements and skin perfusion pressure. Continuous wave Doppler is a very helpful method for confirming the presence or absence of PAD, but it does rely uh, on someone being really quite experienced to be able to differentiate the, the sound between a triphasic waveform in a normal individual uh, and a monophasic waveform in a patient with peripheral artery disease. But in those 
uh, experienced hands, it is quite a reliable method for confirming or excluding the presence of PAD. But it really doesn't tell you anything about the uh, perfusion uh, in the foot. It just simply tells you or gives you an indication of whether there is uh, atherosclerotic uh, PAD. ABI or ankle brachial index is a very uh, helpful method for confirming or excluding the presence of peripheral artery disease. And in fact, it's used in very large epidemiological studies to, to do just that. Uh, it does have its limitations, and especially in patients with calcified arteries at the ankle level. And of course, that's more common in patients with critical limb ischemia. And the problem with the ABI is that about 30% of people with critical limb ischemia have a normal ABI. And this is more common in patients with chronic, chronic kidney disease and, and diabetes. I think toe pressure is a very useful tool in the armamentarium to diagnose or exclude PAD. Uh, and it's especially helpful in patients who may have uh, a spuriously high ABI due to uh, arterial calcification at the ankle level, such as in patients with diabetes or chronic kidney disease. It also gives you an indication of the perfusion deficit and perhaps some information about whether the patient is at high risk of either amputation or failure to heal of a wound on a foot. TCPO2 or transcutaneous oxygen uh, measurement and skin perfusion pressure are, are measures of the microcirculation. And they're quite useful actually in patients with diabetes and wounds because they uh, give you some idea of whether a wound is likely to heal. So very low uh, values, so typically less than 30 millimeters of mercury would give an indication that a wound is uh, unlikely to heal, whereas much higher values, uh, such as greater than 40 or 50 millimeters of mercury of TCPO2 or skin perfusion pressure, would give you some indication or, or uh, reassurance that a wound is likely to heal. And therefore, that's quite helpful in the decision making, particularly in patients with diabetic foot ulceration. The imaging techniques uh, principally used are duplex ultrasound, uh, CT angiography and magnetic resonance angiography. And they're all very reliable tests to uh, establish whether a patient has PAD, but clearly some of them are invasive uh, and they're more expensive. Um, and for me in my clinical practice, uh, the issue with those tests is that they give you a roadmap, and that's very helpful because uh, it helps you plan any intervention. But it doesn't tell you anything about the potential of a wound on a patient's foot to heal, and it doesn't tell you anything about whether that patient is at risk of amputation. All it gives you is a roadmap. It doesn't tell you anything about the perfusion deficit, which is very important, especially in patients with diabetic foot ulceration. Uh, assessing a patient with diabetes and a foot ulcer is a common thing we all do in everyday clinical practice and I think it's important to recognise that there are many aspects uh, of the patient that you'd need to take into account, but specifically taking into account the risk of amputation and the potential benefit of revascularization, then I will use a uh, classification system and the classification system I favour is the Wi-Fi system which was uh, developed with the Society for Vascular Surgery. And what that does is tells me as a clinician or gives me some information about the potential for benefit from revascularization and the potential that this patient may end up with an amputation. Uh, and what it does is uh, separate and categorize a number of important components of the foot, including the uh, severity of the wound, the severity of ischemia, and the severity of foot infection. And that's why the non-invasive vascular lab test is so helpful because that really helps categorize the severity of perfusion deficit. And this is very important in terms of both uh, clinical management and prognostication. <laughs>